The 21st century has been the backdrop of several major shifts in our financial system. The biggest trend seen in these changes has been digitization, moving the traditional brick-and-mortar methods of finance onto the net. PayPal is one of the largest payment services out there, stocks and bonds are bought off Robinhood, and some banks are now entirely online. In addition to these various financial services, money itself has seen digitization in the form of cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency needs no introduction, it has been a topic of constant discussion and fascination over the past few years. It's been presented as an investment opportunity and alternative to fiat currency, which has attracted numerous ardent followers of the technology. Those who invest heavily in cryptocurrencies are told they'll strike it rich off the coming Web3 boom and break free from the traditional banking monopoly. Some people, mainly early adopters, have experienced just that. Those who invested in the early years of cryptocurrency saw their wealth multiplied several times over, and it's these early success stories that have given cryptocurrency its allure. Now in 2022, millions of people are supporters and investors in crypto, and a huge community has formed around the tech. This community has gathered something of a reputation over the past few years, being thought of as obnoxious, toxic, and fanatical. To me, these comparisons don't capture the full picture, because once you peel back the layers on this community and see how it really operates, you'll find that crypto is a cult. Now, what do I mean by cult? When you hear the word cult, most people think of groups like Jonestown or Heaven's Gate, fringe religious movements that, uh, didn't end so well. While the religious aspects of these groups were front and center, it isn't necessarily what made them into cults. Unlike conventional religious organizations which allow their members to participate as they please, these cults had a harmful, authoritarian, almost totalizing control over their followers. Members of Jamestown, Heaven's Gate, and similar cults were expected to give up their money, time, names, and even lives to the greater cult, much to their demise. To that end, it's not insane religious dogma that makes a cult, but the control exerted over its followers. This control theory of cults was first postulated in 2015 by psychology expert Stephen Hassan. In his dissertation, The Bite Model of Authoritarian Control, he lays out numerous traits and tactics seen in authoritarian, high-control environments. Here, the acronym BITE refers to the different types of control exerted by cults on their members, namely behavior control, information control, thought control, and emotional control. All these methods of control are meant to create an authoritarian environment, one where members are reliant on the leader or the larger cult for survival, sustenance, and self-worth. Any group, organization, or movement that applies these methods of control on their members is, first of all, extremely harmful and damaging to those within, and second, generally considered a cult. This brings us back to cryptocurrency and the cult-like nature of its community. When you look at the patterns of this community, both within itself and towards broader society, you find every aspect of the bite model present in some fashion. It is a genuinely toxic and harmful environment, and it's all due to the various methods of control present within, starting with behavior control. Behavior control is perhaps the most overt aspect of a cult. Common elements of behavior control in the bite model include telling people who they can see, what they can wear, or what they should do with their time. While the crypto community has, shall we say, a libertarian slant, there is one form of behavior control that permeates the larger group, financial control. Financial control is one of the most common and most effective methods seen in cults, where members are typically asked to dump most, if not all, of their money into the cult. This in turn creates a dependency on the cult because you have little money and thus little recourse if you want to leave. In the crypto community, this manifests itself in a major pressure not to just invest in crypto, but dump everything into Bitcoin, Ethereum, NFTs, and the latest shitcoin that definitely isn't a pump and dump. They're led to believe that people who invest in crypto are sticking it to the man and investing in the future, and anyone who doesn't purchase crypto is just some sheep brainwashed by the Fed. However, given the general volatility of the market, coupled with the abundance of overt crypto scams and rug pulls, most people just end up losing frightening amounts of money. Then, once someone's severely in the red, the community will come around to let them know they can recoup their losses easily, just by investing in the next ridiculous crypto project. At the end of the day, the crypto community conditions its members to wantonly invest and dump money into crypto, even to their clear and obvious detriment. Now, the most common retort to this line of reasoning are the success stories of crypto. I won't deny that people have gotten fabulously wealthy off crypto projects both new and old, 
but the presentation of these success stories dovetails into the next form of control by the crypto community, information control. Information control involves the careful and specific presentation of information to create a particular narrative, and is a common tactic seen in cults. This is typically done by subjecting members to propaganda glorifying the cults, or by forbidding them from accessing information outside the cult's bubble. This is done to maintain the quote-unquote legitimacy of the cult, to have its members believe they aren't actually in a cult, essentially. In the crypto space, information control is done by stressing the success stories of cryptocurrency and downplaying any of its drawbacks and abject failures. The luxuriant lifestyles of crypto millionaires are put on full display, a not-so-subtle message that anyone can enjoy this lifestyle with crypto. In contrast, the much more frequent story of regular people getting their savings wiped out is typically shouted down and ignored. The crypto community loves to list off the benefits of cryptocurrency, such as its decentralized nature and security features. At the same time, they either deny or suppress the fact crypto ownership is centralized in the hands of an extreme minority, and that crypto breaches and thefts are worryingly common. The crypto community creates an environment where its members are told crypto is a flawless system that will 30x their money in 5 days, in spite of overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Worst of all, any attempt to bring criticisms or concerns against cryptocurrency simply isn't tolerated, and these conversations are often shut down thanks to the next form of control. Thought control. Thought control does what it says in the box. Try to control the thought patterns and beliefs of a cult's members. Thought control typically involves adopting a black and white approach towards those inside and outside the cult, along with a wholesale rejection of any and all criticism. Thought control in the crypto community is best demonstrated by the term FUD. FUD stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and is a buzzword used to shut down conversation about legitimate and reasonable issues surrounding cryptocurrency. Concerns around crypto, by their nature, are illegitimate. They're FUD. They need to be shot down. And all you need to know is that cryptocurrency is super cool. In line with this, the crypto community has cultivated an extreme in-group bias. If you aren't an investor in crypto or NFTs, you're an idiot loser who is behind the times. Crypto sets you free while fiat currency chains you to inflation or some other stupid aphorism. In short, the crypto community undertakes aggressive measures to think of crypto only in the most flattering of terms, reality be damned. Finally, many community members are effectively stuck in this toxic cult thanks to the last form of control, emotional control. Emotional control is arguably the most fundamental and most effective means of control for cults. Cults often manipulate the emotions of followers, portraying the outside world as hostile or evil, with the cult their only source of peace and joy. Emotional control in the crypto community is best described by the term FOMO. FOMO, or the fear of missing out, is the underpinning of the crypto community. Members are told that they need to get in quick on cryptocurrency, otherwise they'll never get to enjoy the bajillion X returns when it goes to the moon. People who invest in cryptocurrency are brave and bold, and anyone who doesn't is just a big pussy. This kind of framing just preys on people's greed and insecurity, and in turn makes investing in cryptocurrency a source of validation. Furthermore, and worst of all, the community aspect of crypto is a farce. While many people form solid and meaningful relationships within this group, they're built on tenuous grounds. If you feel you've had enough of the rug pulls, false promises, and flat-out lies from the crypto community, you lose every friend you've made if you decide to leave. They can't have fudders or no-coiners in their group after all. This in turn creates a powerful psychological reliance on the crypto community. The crypto cult. By this point, the culty characteristics of the crypto community should be obvious. Members lose money by participating in the group, they're gaslit to believe crypto is only beneficial, and their existence in the group is held by a thread severed by the slightest criticism. Now, this all might sound like some semantic game to dunk on crypto bros by calling them cultists. While I certainly am no fan of this cult, the damage it causes both to those inside and outside of it is severe. If you go on crypto discords or, god forbid, reddit, people's stories about their negative experiences with crypto are heartbreaking. Crypto bros have lost friends and family because of their awful financial advice. They've fallen into debt due to buying too much Elon eggplant token. The National <laughs> Prevention Hotline is a common sight after major crashes or failures of an exchange because the losses are just that big and many people can't take it. I don't want to completely absolve these people of guilt. They ultimately made these decisions, but they were in many cases intentionally misled as to what crypto could do for them. 
Furthermore, having regular people fall prey to this system isn't good for the general health of society, and should thus be mitigated to the best of our ability. This ultimately comes back to the core idea of this video. Crypto is a cult, so how can we get people out of it? Before we can tackle this issue, we need to look at why people join the crypto cult in the first place. The most obvious answer is, of course, money. Crypto is perceived by many as a get-rich-quick scheme, and this naturally appeals to the greed present in each and every one of us. However, and perhaps more importantly, we're living in a period of increasing financial desperation throughout society. To many, the future appears ever more bleak as vertical mobility is reduced and rights are eroded across the globe. Crypto, then, is a source of hope, and people are desperate to cling to whatever scraps they can find, be it real or not. To that end, what can be done to offer real hope and real support to these people? First and foremost, I think is forgiveness. The crypto cult is, frankly, stupid. I don't think I need to elaborate further after every example I've given in this video. However, we don't fault friends or family for falling into cults. We just want them back from before they joined. Being able and willing to support those who are trying to leave would certainly help thin their numbers and give some modicum of hope for the outside world. The second solution is better financial education. Making sure individuals both inside and outside of crypto understand how to avoid these situations would help prevent them from falling prey to them in the first place. The third and final solution is much more fundamental. Having an economic system that doesn't create this kind of desperation in the masses. Such desperation would not be present if people weren't living paycheck to paycheck, and having an economic system that rewards psychopathy and treachery rather than decency and humanity is definitely a contributing factor. With these solutions in mind, hopefully we can assist those negatively affected by the cult of crypto and prevent others from falling for its siren song of a line going up. Thanks for reaching it to the end. Before going into some final thoughts on the topic, do please like, subscribe, and definitely share the video around with anyone marginally interested in the crypto space. It'll either confirm their suspicions, piss people off, or help those trying to get out. With that out of the way, the motivation for this video came from the latest round of major crashes and dips in the crypto space. Luna and Celsius both recently imploded, and Bitcoin is at like a two year low as I write this. And I know two things would come from it. The national hotline would be plastered everywhere, and crazy people on Twitter, Discord, and Reddit would be unbelievably defensive of crypto even after these spectacular failures. It's genuinely culty behavior, and I believe this perception is borne out by the facts of the broader crypto community. I hope that these people can come to their senses about how pervasive cons and scams are in the crypto space, and in turn, move on before they incur even more personal and financial damage. Time will tell, but I genuinely hope that this video is helpful to that end. On a personal note, I would also like to give some of my thoughts on cryptocurrency in general. I did a full video on it, so I feel I have the obligation to put my cards on the table. First and foremost, I believe the technology at large has fundamentally failed in the goals it laid out, and is frankly unlikely to achieve them. Crypto set out to be decentralized, but the overwhelming majority of cryptocurrency and mining rigs are concentrated in a select few individuals and groups. Rather than being a currency for the people, it mimics the current unequal financial paradigm. Banks and traditional financial institutions are getting in on crypto as well, and they'll probably influence it to work for rather than against them. A friend of mine and fellow creator put it best when he noted that the mob isn't dealing in Bitcoin, they're using USD. In spite of the myriad benefits of cryptocurrency, I don't see them using it anytime soon. Finally, I don't say this with any joy or smug self-satisfaction. I think the goal of having crypto be a decentralized currency anyone can benefit from is laudable, if not important. It's just I can't realistically see this goal being achieved anytime soon. In any event, thanks again for reaching the end. Do the things that make the algorithm happy. And until next time, take care.